You gotta check out this mid-journey trick to create your own custom fonts like this. I'll show you how to do it on Discord first, and then we'll go to the website after. A big thank you to the user Wonderful World of Stuff for taking the time to teach me, and there are only three steps that you need to worry about. Step one, creating your foundational prompt, and there are five things that you need to focus on. The first is theme, and you can write it like this, a blank hyphen themed letter. Stick to one or two keywords for your theme. We don't want to dilute the prompt because there are some other important parts we need to include after. You can come up with anything you want here, like a pirate themed letter, I like these a lot, or a 90s electric colored collage inspired letter. I mean, look how cool these are. After your theme would come an outline. You don't need to mention an outline, but I think you should consider it at least. You can use directions such as bold black outline or a feeling like crisp, sleek, messy even, or a more concrete term like contour. So we have theme, outline, and then background. I think you should include either a white or black background in your prompt so that it's easier to isolate the letters after. And you'll end up with something like this, a tie-dye letter S font with black outline on a white background, or a retro-futuristic themed letter S font with an aesthetic outline on a white background. I had a lot of fun making these and I bet you'll come up with something great as well. Now let me just say, does it matter what letter you start with? I don't think so, but I was told to start with the letter S, so I'm telling you that too. That's all you really need in terms of words, but there are two more things you should write in your prompt. And you know what? I forgot to introduce myself. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Nolan and I help curious people learn AI without feeling overwhelmed. Now let's finish step one by adding two parameters. Parameter number one is chaos. You should include a small chaos value in your prompt, maybe two or three, and that is just to conjure up some extra variety for you to choose from. And parameter number two is aspect ratio, dash dash AR one by one. You should make sure you're using a square aspect ratio, I mean, you can obviously experiment with different size frames, but a square ratio will probably get you what you're looking for. So let's create a font on the fly. What can we make? How about this? Let's go with a zoo themed letter S font, white background, dash dash AR one by one, chaos two. Super simple, but amazing. Yours can be slightly more complex, of course. This is where you get to choose which of these you like. We'll hit upscale and then we'll move on to step two. Step two is where we prompt for the other letters. I'll try to go slow, but please don't hesitate to rewatch this part of the video. So let's start with this. We need to copy and paste the first part of our prompt again, everything but the parameters. A zoo themed letter S font, white background. And we need to replace the letter S. You can go one letter at a time here, or you can write permutations. That's a curly bracket followed by each letter you want to create inside of their own quotation marks, separated by commas, close with a curly bracket. Now that we have our new prompt, we're not done. We need to go back to our foundational font image, click once so it expands, right click and hit copy image address. In the prompt box, we need to use control V or command V and paste the image address at the end of the prompt. It will be a long link, so try not to get overwhelmed. We're going to hit the space bar and then add a new parameter, dash dash IW, to determine the image weight. Hit space and then add a value between like 1.5 and 3. I suggest sticking with 3 for now, but you should know that this is slightly adjustable. But we're not done. We need to hit space on our keyboard again, then enter a new parameter, dash dash sref, sref, followed by hitting space, pasting the image link again with control V or command V. We're still not done. Hit space again, and we have one more new parameter to include, dash dash sw for style weight, and then a value of 1000. Finally, we're going to exclude any chaos from this part of the process, but we are going to make sure we are using a square aspect ratio still, dash dash ar one by one. And look what this creates, look how cool these are. I have to warn you, making these fonts tend to favor capital letters. I've tried mentioning lowercase in the prompt, but I've had trouble getting it to work. Please let me know if you have any tricks that I'm missing. And you may have noticed that some of these didn't turn out very well. So step three is fixing the wonky letters. For some reason, certain letters just don't generate easily. L, T, and even O are the ones I've noticed the most. I can't say I know why it's happening, but here is how you can fix them. First is you can start by exploring variations. We'll click upscale on one of the letters that looks the closest, and then we'll explore both subtle and strong variations. 
You could even try vary by region and make small selections to nudge the letter in the right direction. That's up to you. Very subtle didn't really seem to work, but very strong wasn't bad. I think the T turned out all right there. Another thing you could do is try running the prompt again on that specific letter, but lowering the image weight. And we'll change the three to something like 1.5. This is why I brought it up earlier. That image weight is slightly adjustable. And hey, look at this. Number one isn't bad at all. I'd say that's actually pretty perfect. But my big advice to fix your letters is to try another lesser known parameter, dash dash SV style version. There are four style versions for you to choose from. Four is the default, so you've already done that, which means you can try one through three with a permutation like this. Curly bracket, one, comma, two, comma, three, closed curly bracket. I'm telling you to try all the different style versions because I have absolutely no idea which one will work, but in my experience, one of them will work. And you could end up with something like these. Here's style version two for the letter T, and these didn't work at all, which is why we wanted those other options. Style version one also didn't work. These are a little embarrassing. Let's see how style version three turned out. And look at that. I told you one of them would work right here in number two. The T looks like a T. I'm pretty happy with that. So there's how you create your own font through Discord. But let me show you how to do it on the Midjourney website. It's probably way easier to do it here. We'll go to our original upscale, the zoo themed letter S font on a white background. We need to make sure we go into the creation actions of more options and make sure use and prompt is selected. At the bottom, we're going to click on use prompt. And then at the top in the prompt box, we're going to replace this letter with the other letters that we're looking for. Now that we've replaced the letters, we'll go back to the bottom and make sure we use this original picture as an image prompt and as a style reference. That's all you need to do. Once you've clicked those buttons, we'll go back to the top and we're gonna add the parameters that we need, which is IW3 and SW1000. Look how easy that was. I know that some of these didn't work out that well, which is when we would use the style version trick I showed you earlier. Style version two seemed to work, and even style version one isn't bad here or here. There's how you make your own custom fonts inside of Midjourney. Let me just quickly go over some things to remember. The big key is to use your image as both an image prompt and a style reference. You could also use the same seed number, but I found it didn't make much of a difference. Remember not to use chaos after your original generation because it's harder to get the right images. And you're going to run into some difficult letters and numbers like L, T, and 1 are the ones I've noticed the most. Maybe some super advanced tip is to start your font with one of those letters rather than an S. You could try the variation buttons if it turns out a little wonky. And you could try different style versions on individual letters. And if you're serious about using these professionally, you should definitely upscale them. And I I would play between both the subtle and the creative upscale. And hey, if you learned something new, please consider leaving a like on this video so we could share it with more people. I need your help with that. If you want some more tips, you can check out this video right here. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.